Hello, 7th grade. It's Mr. Chase here with your Chapter 1 test prep review. We're going to go over um, pretty much everything that's exactly on the test. If you watch this video and pay attention and know the stuff in this video, then you should be absolutely successful on the Chapter 1 test. So let's get right into it. All right. We're going to review the vocabulary. These are all the words that are listed, and they are all on the test. So you'll want to know, be able to identify the definition for each of these words, and we'll go right over the um, words and their exact definitions that'll be right on the test. So if you can get these two together, the word and the definition, you should be all set. Most of these you should know. A couple of them may still be stumping you, but hopefully this review will resolve that. And again, you can watch this section a couple of times if the vocabulary is a challenge for you. Um, hopefully you've already got flashcards, which I asked you to do, or Quizlet or some uh, tool like that to help you memorize these words. Okay, so an organism is... Uh, these are things that have all six characteristics of life. You should probably be really familiar with that by now. A cell is the smallest unit of life uh, at this time that we've identified. So a cell is the smallest unit of life. Unicellular, unicellular organism. These are living things that are made up of only one cell. Within that one cell, they have different structures in the cell that perform all the functions that are necessary for life for that cell. Unicellular, one, like a unicycle, just one cell. Multicellular, living things that are made up of two or more cells. Pretty self-explanatory. Multi is more than one, and uh, that should be pretty easy for you. Homeostasis, homeostasis. This is an organism's ability to maintain a steady internal condition <laughs> Maintain steady internal conditions when outside conditions change. For example, maintaining temperature um, like we do. We regulate, uh, humans regulate their body temperature. If it gets too hot, we sweat. If it gets too cold, we shiver. Stuff like that. Okay, if you're hungry, you eat. These are all things that are done by an organism to maintain homeostasis. That's a steady internal condition, uh, regardless of what's happening outside that organism. Binomial nomenclature. I know that's those are two really big unfamiliar words for most of you, uh, but the key that you want to look at to be able to being able to identify what this word means is binomial. Bi like bicycle has two wheels. A binomial has two names. Okay, so this is a system that gives each organism a two-word scientific name. Uh, bonus points if you know that that's the genus and the species for each living organism. Okay, species, speaking of that, is a group of organisms that have similar traits and, and are able to produce fertile offspring. We've talked about that in class, so species can reproduce, and if it's not a viable species, they can't reproduce. Genus, this is a group of similar species, so it's one level up in the eight classification system, so these organisms will be similar. Sometimes they can mate, but typically if they do mate, um, it two species within the same genus uh, mate, they their offspring tend to not be fertile, so that would not be, uh, that's why they wouldn't be the same species. Dichotomous key, dichotomous key. This is a series of descriptions arranged in pairs that lead the user to identify uh, the identification, excuse me, of an unknown species. So it helps you, help scientists, help people who are trying to sort out what something is, helps them figure out what that something is. Cladogram. This is a, we haven't used this word much. Uh, we talked about it briefly in class, but this is a branched diagram that shows relationships among organisms, including which uh, common ancestors. Okay. Light microscopes. Unsurprisingly, a light microscope uses light and one lens to enlarge an image of an object, and can be used for viewing living organisms. Light microscope. Okay, we've used them. You've all used them. I wish we had more time to use them more, and I'm sure you will as the trimester progresses. All right, a compound microscope. All right, so it's still a light microscope, but it uses more than one lens. Okay, compound meaning many, so it has more than one lens. To magnify an object, it has an ocular and an objective lens. We talked about that. You should be familiar with it, and we'll, that'll come up in a minute. And it can be also used to view living organisms, so both light and compound microscopes can be used to view living organisms. Now, an electron microscope, on the other hand, uses not light, but magnetic field, hence the name electron, to focus a beam of tiny particles, called electrons, through or onto an object, and it has the highest magnification. Okay? You really need to know that. Trust me. Now, 
I don't know that we've talked about specific types of electron microscopes, but you do need to know this for the test. Not exactly sure why it's on the test, but they are. Okay, so a scanning electron microscope, SEM. This produces a three-dimensional image of the cell's surface. So it does not go into the, to the cell. It just stays outside and shows you the structure and what's on the surface of the cell. So scanning, if you think about looking, just kind of look outside. You scan the horizon. It's going to show you what's there, okay? Um, but you won't be able to see into it versus, oops, there should be one more there. Hang on. Oh, there it is. Out of order. Okay, let's go over here. We're going to... So there, uh, there's a transmission electron microscope, or TEM. This produces of, uh, an image of the tiny structures inside a cell. Okay, so if you think of transmission or transmitting, like going through, um, you're actually getting into the cell. So transmission electron microscope goes into a cell. Go back over here. Scanning electron stays on the outside. It gives you a three-dimensional image. Though. It's pretty cool. All right. Next up, systematics. All right, so that's just the name that we give or that is given to the current classification system used to classify all living organisms. So it's just the name of the system. Systematics, that's the system name. Okay, pretty, they're kind of linked together. All right, I know you did that one. All right, six characteristics of life. These, hopefully, you all know, we've talked about it over and over and over again. It, the order does not matter, but you do need to have all six of these. Um, so it's a, a Living organism will store and use energy. It responds to stimuli, maintains homeostasis. That's that steady internal state. It has organism, uh, organization or is organized, has structure. It's capable of reproduction, and we've discussed why that's important. And it exhibits growth and development. We'll talk about the difference. Some of you are struggling with the difference between growth and development, so please pay attention when we get to that part. There we go. Okay, so uh, also with regard to the six characteristics of life, you do need to be able to choose one of them that you, that's your belief, is especially important and not just say, okay, homeostasis is really important, but also why you think that particular characteristic is most important. So you need to be able to choose one and then explain why, have some logical, um, reasonable reason why you chose that and why you think it's the most important characteristic of life. All right. This also we've talked about a lot, the eight level of classifications in our systematics, the way we um, the current system classifies life, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, uh, we've talked about some tricks for doing that, and most of you seem to have gotten that pretty well. In case you did not, here are some links, um, and I will try to get them in the description below if I can sort that out. The first one is, it says, mnemonic device. It gives you a whole bunch of other sentences if you don't like our sentence that we used. Um, some of them are not super appropriate, so I'm not going to share all of them with you. Just say that you can go there, and uh, I like the one that talks about um, pandas. There's pandas and chocolate, and that's kind of my favorite one. But I'll, we'll go over the one that we used, the mnemonic sentence, to help us um, memorize that order, because you do need to have them in order. And let's go back over here. Let's list them in this order from uh, largest category, which is domain, down to specific. So let's try to get them in this order versus smallest to greatest. Okay, so when you list them, please list them in this order. Exactly. Okay. Also, um, <laughs> if you're into this sort of thing, uh, I checked a couple of these out. There's some, uh, there's actually a rap video, <laughs> which is terrible, but funny. And then there's a song, and it also has a lot of great info. Now, this one's actually a little better. Um, the rap one seems to be a video from like the 90s or something that somebody put on YouTube, but Either one of these may help you. They may, I don't know, they may upset you because they're so awful. But either way, they may help you remember. And again, I'll try to put the links in the description below if I can sort that out. Okay, so you need to know how to use a dichotomous key. That's the uh, questions that are in pairs. We did this on the dinosaur one. Most of you got this pretty well. Just to remind you, so you always start at the top, like the number one, and then you work your way down based on your answers. Uh, when you see this on the test, um, there are only, let's see, it's about seven of these, I think. Yeah, like seven things you need to sort through. Um, just go slowly. Take your time. Don't rush. If you rush, you're likely to make mistakes. And when you do it, please uh, go back through it and just kind of double check. Make sure you, that you're uh, you're still agreeing with the, your first choice. Okay, so take your time on this one. Do not rush. You'll be more successful if you just relax. Okay. This also, this this exact diagram right here, this letters, everything, the words below, it's all 
on your test. Exactly this. And now we've I gave you three three different ways. We did it in the video. You did this exact one, and then you had another practice one where you diagrammed it, and then uh, you ha I gave you a blank one to practice on. This exact one, which you should all have uh, to look over, is on the test. The thing that a couple of you messed up on, or had uh, struggled with, I should say, is this F. Okay, my laser pointer on here. Okay, so this guy right here. Okay, that is where is it in here? Nose piece. Where did that go? Okay, so that's the nose piece. I don't see the name in here. Where is that? And then also these, all three of these are the objective lenses. And then also down here, this L and M. Um, so the L is the where did it go? Okay, so start with M. Sorry, it's the diaphragm that uh, allows the amount uh, adjusts the amount of light that come in. This is the diaphragm right here, and then this here. The condenser is um, L. Okay, so M is diaphragm. This bottom bigger circle here, and then L is going to be the condenser lens that focuses the lens in. Okay, light source is obviously E down here. Okay, got that. So F is the nose piece. Why isn't that on there? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, Ro revolving rotating nose piece. That's this guy. Okay, that's the F. That's that circular part right there. Can you guys see that? And then G is all three of these, not just that one. Um, those are the objective lenses. Nose piece, objective lenses. Okay, and then down here, we've got um, diaphragm right here, the M, and then L is the condenser lens. Okay, got that? Because that's where most of you seem to be struggling. And then over here, of course, you've got coarse adjustment on the outer uh, knob, and then I is going to be fine adjustment. Our micro microscopes, unfortunately, didn't have these two, but uh, that's what they would be labeled if we had them. Okay, so know this. Be ready. This exact one right here. Not going to be any surprises. Now, what's the difference between growth and development? Some of you have been, some of us have been struggling with that. Okay, so growth is just basically getting bigger. Okay, the organism's not changing per se. It's not developing any differently. It's just getting bigger. Okay, so development is when an organism changes structures, has different structures and different functions occur. For example, okay, a frog starts out as a tadpole and then becomes a frog. It sprouts legs, it's in the water, it's swimming, it has a tail, and then it changes all of that and becomes a frog. That's development. Okay, if it just grew and didn't develop, it would be a gigantic tadpole, right? It would just get bigger. All right? Humans grow, we get bigger, but we also develop. You guys are all changing. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, people change as they get older, um, and so the structures change. Uh, you don't just get larger. You're not just a large baby, okay? You change. You develop hair. You get, you know, whiskers and all that stuff. So we're not going to talk about the details. You all know them or you should, and uh, that's development. Growth is just getting bigger, adding more cells. Developing is changing. The organism is changing structures. Okay, now, we have not particularly gone over this, but I want to make sure you understand. To sort out how much something is being magnified, when you have an ocular lens, that's that eyepiece, and then the objective lens, which is the one that rotates. Uh, for example, if you have a 10x ocular lens, that's the one you look through, and then the, the objective lens is 4. You multiply the two numbers together, like you see on your screen here. Okay, 4 times 10 is going to give you 40. That's the total magnification for that setup on that microscope. And another example is if you have a 10x ocular lens, which is pretty standard, and the objective lens is 50, you multiply 10 times 50, and you get 500. Okay, You need to be able to sort this out um, and answer these questions. Also, the other way it is on the test is it says it'll give you the ocular lens, whatever... Uh, power that is, and it won't tell you what the objective lens is, but then it'll tell you what the total is. So 10 times something equals 200x. So what is the something equal? Let's see if I can change this to a pen now. Pen. Okay, so what is this? Oh, where are you, pen? There. What is that equal? Let's see if this will come out at all. Okay, 20. It's going to be a little scribbly because I'm doing it with my mouse. Okay, so this question mark here is going to be 20. So you need to be able to figure out what's missing what the something is here to get this. It's a little simple division, hopefully, for you. Okay, same thing down here. If you know the ocular lens is 5, they're not always 10, and we don't know the objective lens, that's that one of the lower part that you rotate around, but you're going to end up with 500 total magnification. What is that? 
Okay, most of you can probably figure out that that's going to be, oops, 100, right? Because 5 times 100 equals 500. I don't know that I've ever seen 100 power um, objective lens. It'd probably be really long. But just so you understand how that all works, okay? It's just simple, simple math. Don't let it throw you just because we haven't talked about it specifically, right? It's a simple equation. Something times something equals something else. you got to figure out what, either what the total is or what's missing, okay? Hopefully that won't throw too many of you. All right. What evidence is used to classify living things into groups? This will come from your text, but here's a re um, review list for you. This is a question right off the test. So some things that are used now, we have DNA testing. That's something that uh, is just recent to be able to classify, to help classify living things into groups. You have their ancestry, uh, which we're figuring out to the best of our ability in terms of ancestry, um, in terms of evolution and development. And then looking at the cell types that are contained in that uh, organism, that also helps us to um, identify organisms that are similar, where they live, what environments they live in. Okay, if organisms live in similar habitats or can, uh, can live, then they're probably related. And also how they obtain food or energy. These are all different categories. You'll need to uh, at least know two of them for the test. Okay, I don't know that that's on your review, but it is on the test, so I want you to know that that's coming. All right, I'm not going to tell you the answer to this because it is extra credit, and I am giving it to you ahead of time, which is a little bit of a bonus if you're watching this video. Okay, if uh, you can sort out how Aristotle, uh, Corollus Linnaeus, and Robert H. Whitaker, what they contributed to the classification system, that'll be worth some extra credit, and I believe that's in your book and or you can research it okay pretty simple answers though they're not super complex it's just extra credit all right so that's our review let's see i think i had for you uh this guy that okay so let me go over here real quick Where's all my stuff okay so here's the one i like and the mnemonic one the and again i'll try and get the link below do koalas prefer chocolate or fruit generally speaking that's the domain kingdom Phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That's another mnemonic that I like. Some of them aren't awesome. Here's the the the, the, the wrap. If you're brave, it's only what three minutes long, and might be worth some time. It's definitely gonna um, either horrify you or make you laugh. And then there's the animal classification song, which is uh, again has a lot of great information. It's not super memorable, but it is another just review for you, and it is just over three minutes also. Okay. All right, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, good luck on the test. Please study, 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 and I'm sure you guys will do well. Thanks for watching. Bye.